Welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. Do you feel stuck, silent, and stressed? Is something hurting your heart and soul? Are you burning yourself out? If so, you are in the right place because this is the podcast. People from all over the world join in to learn exactly how to stop suffering and start living with inner peace and joy. Let's get started. Hey, welcome back to the Survivor to Thriver show. We're going to continue to explore this whole issue of control. Our ability to control our own well-being what that really takes, what that looks like, and what that means for our ability to stop suffering and start living with more inner peace and joy in our lives. Yesterday, or in the last episode, I was talking to you about how there's always a win-win solution. First of all, there's always a solution to every problem. There's always a solution to every problem. And there's always a solution that's like win-win. Win-win in the context of that it allows us to solve our problem and do it in a way that promotes our inner peace and happiness and ability to stay content and f- sense of promotes our sense of fulfillment and all those good things. Win, win. Right? Even when you may think, oh, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, it's like if you shift your perspective, you'll see there is a third way. There's always a third way. This is such a key, key concept to understand in our lives because it's the key to our empowerment. It's the key to our being able to effectively meet our need for power and control over our own lives and our own well-being. We're talking about how there are different ways in which we can experience a sense of power and control in our lives. And there's different ways in which we need to experience a sense of power and control in our lives. And not all ways are created equal. Not all ways will help us to meet our need to experience power and control in our lives. Or they won't do so equally. To the most fundamental level at which we need to learn to exercise power and control is controlling our own beliefs, thoughts, feelings, and actions. Because, guys, ultimately... The fact is that this is all that we can really control. Can't control other people. And we cannot even control our results. Not entirely. Our actions are a big contributor to what our results are. But my actions are not the only determining factor of what my results are or what what the results are that I experience in my life. Why? Because my results are not just impacted by my thoughts and actions and intentions. They're impacted by other people's thoughts and actions and intentions as well. And not to mention 
other just things that are not even related to people, other factors that are not even related to people. That may be related to the state of the environment, the non um, people related aspects of our environment. Right? So, for example, I mean, um, climate, you know, the kind of geography. Uh, within which you live, within which we live, within which different um, cultures evolve. You know, you, if you have taken a class in anthropology, when I took my first class in cultural anthropology, I was blown away by how much research there is on this, by the way. You know, there's a lot of research that shows that if you know something about the kind of geology, the kind of geography that exists in an area where people are living, in terms of is it mountains, is it desert, you know, is it like a city environment or uh, just, you know, certain basic things about about that, that kind of environment, you can actually make a lot of very, very accurate predictions about the kinds of culture that and uh, the cultural beliefs and values and practices that the people in those areas will practice. For example, are they going to tend to be more individualistic or more collectivistic? Will they tend to value, like, um, um, I mean, just all kinds of different things, like the kinds of systems of marriage. You can predict what kind of systems of marriage are going to be existing in a culture and among a people if you know about the kind of geography and geology of the area that they're living in. It's like, wow, whoa. If you think about it from a place of, like, just common sense, it might not make sense. It's like, how is that even possible? But once you really begin to look into these things and you begin to study these things, you realize, wow, everything's like so interconnected and so interdependent that even the kind of geography of the area where we are living has an impact on our behavior and our values and the kind of uh, social um, institutions that we set up and so on and so forth. And because there's such a complex uh, system of factors that contributes to the results that ultimately emerge, it's pretty much impossible for us to be in control of our results. There's a lot that we can do to influence our results, to, uh, you know, try and make sure that things happen this way or make it more likely that we uh, see certain kinds of outcomes. But in the end, we cannot guarantee outcomes. We just cannot. Because there are just too many variables that we cannot control that might act in a way that's contrary to um, my desires around what kind of results I want to produce. So we cannot control other, other people. Good news on that is they don't get to control us either. But we can't control our results either. But the good news on that, I'll tell you, is that it's actually a good thing for the most part that we can't control our results because, you know, like that saying that we have, uh, be careful what you wish for. Because we think we know what we want and, I mean, obviously we only want what we think is good for us. But the problem is that we don't always know what's good for us. So sometimes, a lot of times, you know, we want things that are not that great for us. So really, if there are times when we don't get what we want, 
that can be a really, really good thing. And certainly as a person of faith, that is something I really believe in. That no matter what happens, no matter what the outcome is of my efforts, we can always find the good in what happens. There's always some good to be found in whatever happens. Because nothing is just good or bad. The, the reality of our world, the, the nature of reality, is not that things are black and white. There's all kinds of shades of gray. You see? So, good and bad, judgments of good and bad, are, are actually very narrow ways of looking at the world and looking at, at what's happening. If you broaden our perspective, we can begin to see the shades of gray. And why is that important? Because when you can see the shades of gray, you can see more possibilities, more options for not only how you can understand what's going on, how you can react to it in different ways, op different options for how you can respond to a situation. Options are great. Options are a really, really great thing. So being able to see the shades of gray, being able to experience a world where things are not just black and white, where it's like, oh, if I get what I want, it's good. If I don't get what I want, it's bad. No. It's like, okay, whatever happens, happens. I did the best I could with what I knew and what I had. And then what happened, happened. Not something that I could control. So I accept what I cannot control. And then I f focus on what I can control. What can I always control? Or at least learn to always control. I can always learn, even if it's not a reality for me right now, I can learn to control my beliefs, control my thoughts, control my emotions, and control my actions and behaviors. I want to, um, you know, just give you a really quick example of, just think about, like, I know for me this was a lesson, one, just one of the contexts in which I learned this lesson was when I was in self-defense class. And when I first entered that class, I can tell you, I was actually scared. Mostly scared in an excited, good way. Right? Because it was something that I, I felt I really needed to do for myself. And I really wanted to do for myself. I really wanted to learn how to protect myself physically. And to know, to feel strong physically, not just mentally, emotionally. I'd been working for a while by that point in time to build up my mental, emotional strength. And I'd come to a place where I was starting to have more and more confidence in my mental, emotional strength. But I still, at a physical level, felt very vulnerable, very unable to protect myself made me feel very much out of control and afraid as a result. You see, when it came to being able to have any kind of uh, power and control over my own wellness at a physical level. 
So for me, it was something that I needed, I wanted, but it scared me because, you know, growing up as a girl and especially growing up in the kind of culture that I had grown up in India and Pakistan, I had not been taught to fight. I had not been taught to think of myself as capable of protecting my own uh, self at a physical level. In my culture, you know, as a girl, the expectation and the belief at which I found myself living was that I have to depend on the men in my life to protect me. It's like my mother would be like, don't go out alone, take your brother with you. It's like if your brother is with you, then I feel good. I feel, you know, comfortable that you will be safe. But you, as a girl, no, you cannot protect yourself. You must have a boy, a man with you. So that was the kind of mentality with which I grew up. Right? And it really bothered me. So when I got into self-defense class, and now I was like being asked to kick and punch, and not only that, but I was being thrown into scenarios, different scenarios where I was being attacked and challenged in different, um, in different ways. And I had to like defend myself and protect myself. Sometimes even taking on an offensive role. Because, you know, sometimes offense is the best offense. So sometimes even having to make a decision to just step up and take aggressive action to defend myself, protect myself. It was a very, very scary thing to do. And a lot of times, like, you know, I'd find myself like, ah, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Like, I remember one time... My teacher had me pinned against the ground. He sat on top of me. He's like this big fellow, easily 250, 300 pounds, like tall and strong. And the, no matter how much I seemed to try to get out from underneath him or even just release my arms or legs so that I could do something, hit him, kick him, punch him, bite him, but... I couldn't move. He had me completely pinned. And I found myself like panicking, literally, because I didn't know what to do. But you know what? By the end of the class, I learned what to do. And I got put again in a situation that was like scary as hell, but I got myself out of it. It was like literally my worst nightmare come to life in the scenario that I was thrown into for my final exam and I got myself out of it. I felt scared, but I had learned by that point in time how to continue to think through my fear and act despite my fear and get myself out of it. So why am I sharing this with you? It's to share with you the, the, the idea that, you know what, even if it's not a reality for you right now, that you can control your beliefs, your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, no matter the circumstance, it's something that you can learn. It's something that we actually all have to learn because it's not our lived experience. We're not born with this kind of uh, knowing and ability and confidence. But it is something that we can learn. Look, this is still not a reality for me in every context and in every situation. But this is now a reality for me in a lot more contexts and many more different kinds of situations than it was before. And the thing is, now I know the principle. Now I have an awareness that, hey, this is in fact something that's true. I just have to learn to apply it in different contexts. And so now, it's like if I'm a challenge and I'm, I'm feeling that sense of stuckness, 
even if I cannot immediately figure out what the third way is, the win-win solution, but I trust in that, in that possibility. And I get some help and support if I want to make life easier for me and learn to solve my problem quicker, then sure enough, it's like that solution emerges, that third way emerges, the win-win solution emerges. And that's the experience of my life now. Is that, yeah, problems still come up, challenges still come up where I'm, I find myself initially feeling, oh, stuck between the rock and the hard place, but if I maintain my belief in this knowing that there is a third way, that there is always a win-win solution, and I'm then able to find it. And sometimes it's like the, uh, it's like I'm not able to find it on my own. So then it's like, okay, I get some help and support. And then I can find it. But it's like you have to believe in the possibility. At least open yourself up to the possibility. And start to challenge the assumption that there is no other way with courageous action. And then experience, see what happens. All right. So I see the time. My gosh. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up right here uh, for today. You know how to get in touch with me. If you find yourself struggling with something where you cannot find your win-win solution, your third way, please connect with me. It's something that I can help you and guide you through. Allow me to at least try. Okay? So go to my website at www.academyofthriving.com and on our contact us page there, you'll see different ways that you can connect with me. That is your happiness expert, Samia Bano. Until next time, I wish you lots of peace and joy.